Good afternoon, I'm Jill Sealand and welcome to Erner Berry's food service video, a companion to Erner Berry's HRI Buyer's Guide, brought to you by NAMM's 6th edition Meat Buyer's Guide. Today in our report, Erner Berry market reporter Bruce Longo has a discussion with Keith Deemer from the food service sales department of J&B Group located in St. Michael, Minnesota, about the aging of steaks. Also today, James Serpico will be covering this week's price trends and movers for food service from Erner Berry's HRI Buyer's Guide. Then market reporter Angel Rubio and I met to discuss the rising cost of tilapia. Let's start things off with Bruce and Keith as they take a look at the aging of beef. Keith, I want to touch briefly on the aging of steaks for the food service industry. You know, certainly your, your company, J&B Group, up, uh, located in St. Michael's, Minnesota, has found success with their, their aging program. Keith, tell me a little bit about your programs, wet aging, dry aging, and, and maybe some differences in them. Yes, Bruce, we, uh, we do a, uh, a wet age program uh, for our portion cut steak operation, and uh, typically um, it's at least 14 days uh, wet age in the cryovac uh, for our production, and then we also do a dry age uh, program, which is uh, basically can be uh, tailored around it individual customers will do a 14, 21, 28, 35-day dry age program where the, the, the primals are actually uh, taken out of the cryovac, wiped down, and, 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 and held at a certain degree of temperature, 34, 38 degrees, a certain degree of humidity, a certain degree of airflow to maximize um, the aging process in, in dry aging. Okay. Um, so with this process, what really is occurring with the meat itself during the, the two different aging programs? Well, there's been many studies done uh, between dry age and wet age, and uh, the actual natural enzymatic uh, process that, uh, that takes place drastically slows at about 14, uh, 14 days. So up to 14 days is, is what you're going to get most of your uh, tenderization done. It's really after that where uh, you, you start to play in on the, the flavor uh, of the primals themselves, and that's where the dry aging uh, process comes into play. Um, the longer you dry age, the better the flavor or the more distinct the flavor. Okay, so, you know, the customer that goes to the restaurant and eats a, a steak either either wet-aged or, or dry-aged, you know, what type of experience, eating experience, will they have versus a steak that they they buy at their local supermarket, uh, you know, in the in the meat display? Well, a dry-aged uh, dry steak, you can expect it's kind of like a, a fine wine. You know, the longer it's aged, the more distinct the flavor. You're going to, a customer could expect at the restaurant level a uh, more of a beefy flavor, more of a, like, I've heard people say a nutty flavor dry age, and uh, that, it's really the flavor that, that the dry age brings out in, in, the, uh, in the product itself. All righty. Well, that sounds like a, a, a great little bit of detail on, on the aging programs and, and maybe what to expect at, the, uh, at, your, at your favorite white uh, tablecloth type of restaurant. Um, Keith, thanks again you know, for giving us some thoughtful insights on, on some aging programs, and we'll talk to you soon. Great. Thanks, Bruce. Bye now. Thanks, guys. Now with our food service market recap from Erner Berry's HRI Buyer's Guide, here's market reporter James Serpico. Reviewing the HRI movers for the week, uh, we see medium loose dozen eggs are on the rise. Supplies of eggs have been reduced by the recall in Iowa, and demand has been seasonally steady. So the supply side is driving the economic equation in this case. Uh, as beef processors adjusted to the significantly high prices recently paid in the cash cattle markets, the price increases are spread across all primal sections of the carcass, uh, choice butt tenderloins in particular, as we can see here. Um, lamb also improved. Uh, lamb square cut shoulders continue to show strength due to an increase in demand and limited availability of both domestic and imported product. Uh, we also see an increase in the price of 4150 count shrimp as demand is rated good for these items with inventories closely monitored as replacement costs rise from Latin American countries. Uh, we see bone-in pork loins lower as these items have been trading um, on the downside as a result of increased availability due to larger hog slaughter levels. And lastly, supplies for chicken have been more than adequate overall, and for this reason, white meat items such as whole breasts have been influenced as an, in a negative manner, and we can see they moved down this week as well. Uh, that's a quick look at some of our HRI movers for the week. Uh, thank you, and back to you, Joe. Thank you, James. Now, let's take a look at Mayan Angel's discussion about the significantly rising cost of tilapia. 
I'm here today with Erna Berry Market Reporter Angel Rubio, and recently we started to discuss the replacement cost of tilapia. Today Angel is here to help us discuss some recent developments in the tilapia market. Thank you for being here, Angel, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. What's going on? Uh, well, we spoke about this uh, before, and the market had been going up. Uh, gradually. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the problems that this market had, and we mentioned also, is that um, there were plenty of inventories in the U.S., but replacement costs have been going up uh, in the past few months. So uh, prices in the U.S. were, according, uh, were adjusting accordingly as lower price inv uh, inventories were moving uh, out of the spot market. Uh, now in September, we saw some pricing going up, and then now uh, we had some stability on, on, on that sense. So you had replacement costs going up and then the market also went up. Um, however, um, in the past two weeks, the floodings in, in China, in Hainan Island specifically, um, had affected production uh, quite, quite a bit. And prices have gone up probably close to 10 to 15 percent in the last three weeks, which is significant for replacement costs as well. So now the market in the U.S. is, is also coming it's coming up as well, but uh, many importers have saying that, are saying that um, their, their selling prices in the U.S. are probably at or lower than replacement cost orders that will be placed today but delivered in November. So they expect prices to go up in the next few months based, again, on replacement costs. So Angel, other than price, how exactly is this going to be affecting the food service industry as a whole? Well, it pretty much comes down only to price. and. Uh, because costs are higher than obviously prices in yeah. the U.S. will will eventually, uh, or we will see what happens. But uh, but, but it will be, it, it is expected by most that prices will go higher because based on replacement only. So Absolutely. it is a matter about price only. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us. And that is a look and an updated look at the tilapia market. Thanks again, Angel. And from all of us here at Erner Berry, thank you for viewing. That wraps up Erner Berry's Food Service Report, brought to you today by NAMP's new 6th edition Meat Buyer's Guide. Don't forget to check back with us next Thursday, October 28th, for our next report.